everyone! Welcome to your first official geometry video lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to be going through the different notations that we're going to be using in our geometry course this year. So first, I'm going to cover some lines, segments, and rays, and then we'll move on to some different geometric objects. So from my last video on the GeoGebra little intro to the basic skills, um, basic tools, we learned that in order to plot a line, you had to first plot two points. So the notation that we're going to use is going to help us identify the specific line that we're, we want to talk about. So a lot of times in geometry, you get a diagram and it has a ton of lines all over the place. But you want to say, hey reader, look at this specific line. So in order to identify a line, we need to give it a name. And to do that, we use the two points that the line passed through. So, a line, we need to plot two points. And then we can determine our line. Now, we also, in GeoGebra, learned how to label points. And that's very helpful when it comes to geometric diagrams. So, here, we're going to name this point A. And this other point, B. And together, this gives us line AB. So I gave this line a name so that my reader knows exactly what we are talking about. Okay, so we have line AB, but I'm a little bit lazy. And actually, geometers are a little bit lazy because we don't want to write out the word line every single time. So we have a notation that we can use. So instead of writing out line AB, what we are going to do is write the letters AB. And above them, to tell our readers that it's a line, we're just going to draw a line with some arrows. Now, the arrows matter because this line, or the definition of a line, is that it goes off beyond those endpoints infinitely. This is going to keep on going past my whiteboard all the way through both ends. So you need to tell your reader, hey, it's not a segment. It doesn't stop. It keeps going past those two points, but point A and B are on that line. So you can find line AB because I know it's going to go on forever, right? Past those points infinitely in both directions. And I'm going to have point A and point B on this line. So this notation right here basically reads as line AB. So it's a lot nicer than having to write out the word every time. Now, the difference between a line and a segment is a segment's going to stop at those endpoints. So let me draw that out for you. So we have our endpoints, and they stop. Now once again, a diagram can have a bunch of different line segments on it. So what you need to do is give it a name. So I'm going to name this point A and this other point B. So this is my segment AB, so let me name it up here. Now our notation, it's very similar to our first one, but it's a little bit different because I need to tell my reader, hey, it stops at those endpoints. So you're going to use AB once again. But above them, you're going to put a line, a little segment that ends. There's no arrows on it. So you can do this one of two ways. You can just do a line without the arrows, or you can even put little endpoints there if it makes you feel better. So this notation right here is segment AB. It's not line because there's no arrows. It stops at those endpoints. So notice that when you are talking about a segment, you use its endpoints, right, um, in its notations. So this is segment AB. Now here's the tricky part about a segment. So this guy right here literally translates to segment AB. 
but there's a little trick to this. So with a segment, I could actually pull out a ruler and I could give this a length. So like, let me approximate it. Let's say it's about seven inches long. So this, the length of segment AB is about seven inches long. We'll say about, this symbol right here means about, about seven inches, okay? So we have notation to talk about the length of the line instead of the line segment itself. So to do that, we have our AB, okay? But there's gonna be nothing above it. So you, if you see it two letters next to each other with nothing above it, what that's saying is I'm looking at a segment and I'm giving you its length. So this notation right here equals the length of segment AB. And in this case, this would equal seven inches, or it's approximately, that's one of my pet peeves you'll find. If it's not exactly something, I always have to use the approximation symbol. So this right here reads, the length of segment AB is about seven inches. So if you see those end points or those letters next to each other with nothing above it, that's gonna refer to the segment's length instead of the actual segment itself. This notation is referring just, hey, look at this line segment whose endpoints are A and B. E. It's not telling you anything about the length, whereas this is. Okay, the next one we're going to go over is array. So array has one stopping point, but on the other side, it's going to keep on going. But we still need those two points, right, to keep to know where, at which angle, right, we're going to keep going on that side. Um, I'm going to call it AB as well. So we'll, we'll say our endpoint is A, and the one we're going to go past is B. So this is Ray, Ray AB. Now this one, you got to be careful because for the notation, our order is going to matter. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to put letter A. Okay. Oops. And letter B. And my notation for that, well, it's going to look like a combo of these two. So we're going to stop at AB, so I don't, or sorry, we're going to stop at point A, so I don't want an arrow on that side. But I'm going to continue past point B. Now you can kind of see why order matters here, because I need my arrow, or the, um, yeah, the end point arrow to be on above the letter that my ray is going through, okay? So A was my end point, so there's nothing here. There's no arrow where you can even put a dot there. It's tempting to try to put arrows on both sides. So this is my end point. This guy right here, I'm going past this letter B. So if I swapped these and I said, well, this is BA instead. Uh, let me actually divide this so you don't. Um, I'm going to say order matters. Okay, so this is the other way. If you were to instead say ray BA, with your symbol on top. This means I'm stopping and my end point is at B, but I'm going through point A. So let me just label that for you so you can see the difference. Take special note of this because if I do a notation quiz, I might put something tricky like that on there, like what is the difference between this symbol and this symbol? Okay, 
So that, those are our notation for a line, a segment, and a ray. The next one I'm going to do is going to be an angle. Um, and the last one we're going to do today is a triangle. So the next notation that we're going to learn is an angle. So once again, we need to name this angle because my diagram could have a bunch of angles all over the place. So we need to know, well, I'm talking about that specific angle. So before we do that, I'm going to just draw an angle. Now notice I used three points to draw that angle, so I'm going to name those points. We'll name this one A, this one B, and this last one C. So this angle's name is A, angle ABC. So this is angle ABC. Now, this is the key to naming your angle. I should be able to trace your angle with the letters you chose. So what I mean by that is when I say it's angle ABC, I can start at A, go to B, go to C, and I have my whole angle. The middle letter is always your vertex, so it's that center point that the angle opens up at. So this guy right here, this is our vertex. And that's always the middle letter. So symbolically, the way we say angle ABC, because once again we're lazy and do not want to write out the word angle every time, is we just draw a little angle and we use the letters A, B, C. So once again, this is going to be a case where order matters. The middle letter of your angle always has to be the vertex. So I'm going to add that on here, that angle order matters. So I can say, hey, I have angle DEF. Which point is the vertex? Well, it's got to be E because it's always the center letter. So angle A, B, C, vertex this point where it opens out from, it's always going to be the center letter in your notation. Now there's another little trick behind this one because in previous courses you might have noticed that we have acute angles, we can have a 90 degree angle, we can have an obtuse angle, right? They have a different measurement. So we can actually measure how wide this angle is open. So we have notation for that. So like, let's give this an estimate. Now 90 degrees is a right angle like that. It's not quite a right angle. So I'm going to say maybe this angle right here is about 60 degrees open. Okay. Um, and so I have notation to not just talk about the physical angle itself, but to talk about the measure of that angle. So measure of angle ABC. We just put a little M in front of it. Okay, so the measure of angle ABC is about 60 degrees. So notice that these two things are not the same. This is referring to the physical angle, the physical object. I'm saying, look at that angle. It's vertex is B, okay, is that point B. 
This with the little M in front of it actually stands for the measure of angle ABC. So I'm going to write that down here. This means the measure of angle ABC. These two, um, and also the uh, length of a line segment and the line segment itself, those are the notations that get confused probably the most throughout my course. Um, so if you have any questions, make sure to reach out on that um, specifically. Okay, now we're going to move on to the last one, which is a triangle. So the last notation I'm going to introduce is a triangle. So first, let me draw a triangle for you all. I need three points for my triangle. And we also need to label those points. So I'm going to label them A, B, and C. So this triangle's name is ABC. Now, once again, we don't want to have to write out the word triangle every time we're talk talking about a triangle or referencing a triangle, so we use this notation. So we just draw a little triangle, and then we say A, B, C right next to it. So this notation right here just translates to triangle ABC, which is this triangle right here. So that one's pretty basic. Um, there's no special notation for lengths or whatever because you could talk about the individual parts of this triangle, like segment CB has a length, segment AC would have a length, right? Um, we could also talk about the angles within this triangle. We have angle A, C, B. Notice I said C in the middle because that's our vertex. Um, it's like connect the dots kind of when you're um, talking about these figures. So I'm talking about triangle ABC. I could say triangle CAB. Um, it makes the same exact shape. So order doesn't necessarily matter here. Um, it just depends on how you want your reader to look at the points and in what order you'd like them to look. But triangle CAB is the exact same triangle as triangle ABC. Um, just note that it's kind of like connect the dots, so you want your order to be able to smoothly go from one point to the other. It's not really an issue um, in a triangle as much, right, because C is connected to A or B. Um, but in some of our other polygons with more sides, you do have to make sure you're going in order so that your reader is tracing the shape that you're telling them to go look at. Okay, and that's it for notation for now. We will add some as we kind of get to um, know geometry a little bit more and learn a little bit more vocabulary, uh, but those are the basics for now.